Hello everyone, welcome back to Floki's Models. Let's jump right into the painting of the interior. First color to go down is AK Real Colors RAL8012, thinned 1 to 1 with Mr. Leveling Thinner, then sprayed at around 18 psi. I want to get a nice full coverage of the floor of the fighting compartment with this. Next color to go in the airbrush is Tamiya XF88, dark yellow number 2. This is actually RAL7028. This is again mixed 1 to 1 with Mr. Leveling Thinner, and is going down with a coat of hairspray over the floor. After this dried, I used tap water to reactivate the hairspray and chip the floor. I usually use two layers of hairspray, but this time decided to use one, and it was a lot harder to chip. I usually have the opposite effect with two layers, and that's why I decided to go with one this time. But in the future, I will stick with two. Now on to light chipping, using a mix of Vallejo Dark Sand and Desert Yellow. For chipping, I put a piece of packing foam into a pair of locking tweezers. To sponge chip, just dip the sponge into the paint and remove most of it onto a paper towel. Then lightly tap the surface of the part you want to chip. I start around the edges and the high spots first. Then add some spots to the center of the piece. And we are left with an excellent chipping effect. This is the second ammo box, the one that hangs on the sidewall. Now let's refine the sponge chips with a brush. I'm using a 3-0 Red Sabre brush for this. I start by hitting the corners and outlining the edges. Then I add some scratches and connect some of the bigger chips in the center. And this is what the bottom ammo box looks like. And the top ammo box. Now for dark chipping. First color I'm going to use is four drops of German Grey, three drops of German Camo Black Brown, two drops of Blue Fafa Uniform, one drop of Dark Sand, and finally one drop of tap water and mix it all up. Using the same 3-0 Red Sable brush, I fill in the center of the biggest light chips making sure to leave a border of the light chipping. I like to work from the outside in when I do this. Always make sure that when you reload your brush to unload just a touch of paint under a paper towel before going to the part.
And again, here is the two ammo boxes with a layer of dark chips. The side walls of the fighting compartment get the same treatment. Now to do some rust tones using Aptalong 502 Dark Rust Oil Paint. I let a drop of the oil paint sit on a piece of cardboard for a few hours to draw out uh, the excess oil before adding it to my palette and mixing it with a few drops of VMS Oil Expert Matte. I block this in over the dark chip spots. After this is dried for about 30 minutes, I come in with an older 3-0 brush Moistened with some odorless thinner and tidy everything up. Then hit it with a once over with a completely dry soft brush. I will repeat this process again and hit any of the odd looking spots that are left. Next is a pin wash over the interior pieces using industrial earth mixed with VMS Oil Expert Matte. Now to add some filth and grime to the fighting compartment using industrial earth and burnt umber. I brush this into the corners and uh, recesses. I keep alternating between these two colors. I then use an old brush moistened with odorless thinner and blend these together. And then a once over with a completely dry brush. And here is the result. I'll set all that aside to make sure it's completely dry and start to work on the straps for the MP40s. This is 0.1 millimeter copper sheet annealed over a lighter to make it pliable and easier to bend. I bend the copper into the shape that I want and attach it to the MP40s with just a bit of super glue. And the end result is a very realistic looking sling. The bakelite parts of the MP40s are going to be painted a mix of Vallejo Saddle Brown and Flat Red. This is painted over a coat of Alkalad 2 Gunmetal, which is itself painted over gloss black. This color dries to a lot darker shade than what it looks like now. As these will hardly be seen, I just paint the slings with Vallejo Leather Brown and don't do any highlights or shadows. You can see just how dark that Bakelite color got.
And the last step is to take some graphite and rub it into the part with an old soft brush. Combined with the Alkalad gunmetal paint, it gives a realistic sheen. Now it's time to add all the parts together before closing the hull. First, the ammo bag for the MP40s. Then the MP40 itself. The driver's gas mask canister. And add the top and bottom of the driver's seat. Then the driver's seat gets glued in position. This will be the last time that a lot of this is going to get seen. Then the fire extinguisher gets glued in position next to the back door. The leather back of the crew bench. Then the wooden bench seat. I did go back in and rather the dark yellow on the bench to blend in with the rest of the interior. Now the upper and lower hall can finally be glued together. I decided to add the front plate while I was doing this as well. I rough up the surface and then glue the upper ammo box into position. Then finally, the Pack 40 gun mount is secured into place. Now here's the completed interior. I will add more stowage to it after it's completed to keep from knocking anything loose while working on the exterior. Now to leave you guys with some finished shots. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video and find it helpful. If so, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts and ideas, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a giveaway when I hit that 500 subscriber mark. Also, if you want a shop card, send me an email to flokimodels at gmail.com with your mailing address. I'll put that down in the description of the video as well, so you can just copy paste it from there. They are completely free. so. Get one if you want one. I thank you all so much, and stay tuned for many more builds to come.